animals that travel. Several kinds of animals live in the world. And each one has different characteristics. Some animals travel from one end of the earth to the other. Although their bodies are small, they can go long distances without losing their way. Let's look at one of these creatures, the monarch butterfly. The journey of the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly lives in southern Canada. Like all other butterflies, the monarch goes through a series of changes before it is born. First, the mother monarch deposits her eggs on the surface of a leaf. The larvae that hatch from the eggs feed on the leaves for a while and then turn into caterpillars. Then they make an enclosed nest for themselves called a cocoon. The monarch's cocoon is connected to the branch of a tree with a thin but strong attachment. The caterpillar is transformed in the cocoon and slowly emerges a little while later. At first, its wings are deflated, but they fill out as blood is pumped into them. Now the monarch is ready to fly. Monarchs have a very special characteristic that separates them from other kinds of butterflies. In one year, there are four different generations of monarchs. The first three have an average lifespan of five to six weeks. But the fourth generation is different. This generation will go on a journey that lasts about eight weeks and will survive long enough to complete it. The journey begins from various monarch centers in southern Canada and moves to the south. One group will go to California and another will go farther south to Mexico. These different groups of monarchs meet on the journey as if they had received a command from a single center and then continue their journey together. These butterflies begin their journey at a special time, exactly at the autumn equinox, when the day and the night are the same length. After flying for two months, they arrive at the warm forests of the south. The trees are covered with millions of monarchs. The monarchs will stay here from December to March, and during these four months, they will not eat a single thing. They survive on the fat deposited in their bodies and only drink water. 
The flowers that begin to open in the spring are important for monarchs. Now, after waiting four months, they treat themselves to a feast of nectar. Now they have stored enough energy for their return trip to North America. In March, before setting off, they mate. Exactly at the time when the day and the night are the same length, the colony starts to fly north. They complete their journey and give birth to the generation that will ensure the continuation of their species. The new generation is the first of the year and will live about one and a half months. Later come the second and the third generations. When the fourth generation comes, it starts the journey all over again. It will live six months longer than the others and the chain will continue. Now, let's think for a moment about this wonderful journey. How is it that one in every four generations is born to survive six months longer than the others? Why does this long-lived generation always come along in the winter months? How is it that the butterflies begin their journey, or migration, at exactly the time when the day and night are the same length? And how do they manage to make this fine calculation? How does the newly born generation of monarchs know the way on a journey it has never made before? All this shows that monarchs have been created according to a flawless plan for their migration, and they conform to every detail of that plan. If there were least error in the plan, the monarchs would not be able to complete their migration. In that case, all the butterflies would die in the cold of winter and the generations of monarchs would come to an end. These creatures have definitely been specially created and taught to complete this extraordinary journey that they undertake every year. The author of this marvelous creation is Almighty God, the Lord of heaven and earth, the creator and judge of all existing things. nests by weaving grass. To make a nest, the weaver bird first forms a triangular roof. Later, using four different kinds of knot, it encloses this space. Every nest has a strong roof, walls and entrance. The first thing the bird must do is tie a long, thin piece of grass to a thin branch. But this is not so easy. To put this single knot in place, the weaver bird really has to work hard. It is very important that this first knot is made correctly. Otherwise, there is no point in continuing to build a nest. If the first knot is made incorrectly, the later stages will also be incorrect because they rely on the first knot. The knots multiply and the circle is formed. The bird must accurately calculate the dimensions of the circle it has built. 
This circle must be large enough for it to enter, but too small to let a bigger bird get in. The bird almost always succeeds in making this circle the right size. After it has woven the basic circle and enclosed the sides, the weaver bird starts to build the roof. From top to bottom it puts the grass in blade by blade. By patiently applying this technique, it ends by building a perfect nest. When we look at the trees weaver birds live in, we see that there's not just one home here, but a giant city composed of hundreds of homes. Every weaver bird builds the same kind of house in the way that God has taught it. Salmon live in rivers on the west coast of North America. The mother salmon lays her eggs in a shallow place in a river. The young salmon that hatch are fed by a food sack inside the egg. A few weeks later, they can find food in the river. They live in the river for about a year. Salmon are created with the ability to live in both fresh and salt water. The purpose of this is hidden in the wonderful journey the fish will make. One spring day, thousands of salmon began to migrate along the river. After a journey that will last weeks, they finally arrive at their destination, the Pacific Ocean. As soon as they arrive at the ocean, a structural change occurs in the salmon's body, enabling the fish to live in salt water. In the following one to four years, they will traverse large distances in the ocean. From the coast of America, they will pass the shores of Alaska. They will swim in a great arc towards Japan and return again. At the end of their journey, the salmon are prepared for another extraordinary journey, the last and most difficult one of their lives. They will return to their homes, that is, the river bed where they were born. They will enter the same river they swam down years earlier to reach the ocean, but this time they will swim in the opposite direction, that is, upstream, against the current. No obstacle will stop them. They leap out of the water to cross waterfalls and continue their journey. They can jump over obstacles as high as three meters. Sometimes they persist in making journeys as long as 3,200 kilometers. During this whole period, they eat nothing, using the energy they stored while they were in the ocean. 
And finally, without getting lost, they reach the riverbed where they were born years before and lay their eggs there. They have done their duty. The salmon migration is one of the most amazing journeys in nature. After spending years in the ocean, how do thousands of salmon find the river where they were born? To do this, they have to find the one of the thousands of rivers opening into the Pacific that is theirs. Then they have to swim along this river without getting lost and make the right decision at every fork of the many along the river's course. Salmon managed to accomplish this seemingly impossible task. Very well. How do they manage this and why? Scientific research has shown that salmon have a specially created sensory system that allows them to complete their journey. In order to find their direction in the ocean, they have been created with natural compasses that can sense the Earth's magnetic field. Thanks to this, they can find their direction in the waters of the Pacific Ocean without getting lost. But the really important question is, how do the salmon find the riverbed where they were born? For this, a much different system than a natural compass is needed. Research on this question has shown that salmon find their birthplace by following its scent. We never imagine that rivers have their own scent, but in reality, every river in the world has its own chemical composition. The differences between these chemical compositions are generally so slight that they cannot be detected by any creature, except salmon. Let's think for a moment about the extraordinary story of the salmon. You will notice that every stage of the salmon's journey has been carefully calculated. First, the fact that there is a program that commands the salmon to return to the river where it was born years before is a great miracle. Besides this, the natural compass system that allows the salmon to find its way in the ocean and the fact that this fish has the world's most sensitive sense of smell are certainly things that have not come about by chance. All these things show that the salmon is a creature specially created for the migration set out for it. The one who has created the salmon with these extraordinary characteristics is the God, the creator of all living things and the Lord of all the worlds. In the Quran, God says that we will be able to see his creative art in all living things. And in your creation and all the creatures he has spread about, there are signs for people with certainty.
you know? Potter B? Who makes these little pots you see? Do you know? A kind of bee. This bee makes a sticky mountain by mixing its saliva with moist soil. Using this mud, it makes very smooth pots. Just like human beings were making pottery, the bee shapes the pots by constantly turning the mud. When the pot is finished, the bee does not forget to add a mouth section at the top. When the pot is finished, the bee moves the rear part of its body to the mouth section and lays an egg inside it. After putting a portion of food in the pot, it seals the mouth and flies away. The larvae that hatch from the eggs break the pot a while later and emerge by themselves into their new life. These are pots broken and abandoned by the young bees. The young bees emerge and, with no training at all, begin to make perfect pots like their mothers did. It is God who teaches them this wonderful artistry. The creatures we saw in this film show us the skills that God has given them. All these creatures behave because of God's inspiration. God created us and all other living things in the world. By giving every creature its distinctive characteristics, God shows human beings the greatness of his creative artistry. It is our duty to tell people about the majesty and greatness of God and to give Him thanks. God informs us of this fact in the Quran. All praise belongs to God, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth, Lord of all the worlds. All greatness belongs to Him in the heavens and earth, he is the Almighty, the All-Wise.